we are going to start module 3 of chapter 10. In this module, we shall discuss the velocity and acceleration in relativistic mechanics. Our earlier theory provides accurate result when the velocity involved there is much much less than the speed of light. But when the velocity involved there approaches the speed of light, this theory cannot explain the experimental facts accurately. So, we need a general theory which is known as special theory of relativity. Einstein in 1905 develops some postulates. These postulates with their consequences originate from this theory. In the view of special theory of relativity, we have obtained the Lorentz transformation formula, which gives the space and time coordinates with the help of a transformation in relativistic mechanics. Now, in this module, we are interested to obtain transformation for velocity and acceleration. In this module, we shall discuss the velocity and acceleration in relativistic mechanics. First of all, we shall obtain the transformation formula for velocity and then using the transformation formula for velocity, we shall obtain the transformation formula of acceleration. Later on, we discuss about the linear momentum. Let us first discuss the transformation of velocity. Please go through figure 10.5. In this figure, two frames S and S dash have been shown. O is the origin of frame S, which is a fixed frame. O x, O y, O z are the coordinate axis of frame S. O dash is the origin of frame S dash. S dash has coordinate axis O dash x dash, O dash y dash, O dash z dash. Here also we have used special type of coordinate systems. Both the frames has the coordinate axis O x and O dash x dash coinciding. On the other hand, the coordinate axis O y and O dash y dash are parallel to each other. Similarly, O z and O dash z dash are parallel to each other. S dash frame is moving with uniform velocity v with respect to fixed frame S. As S is a fixed frame, so this is an inertial frame. We know that any frame moving with uniform velocity with respect to a fixed frame or inertial frame is again an inertial frame. So, the frame S dash is also inertial. Here, we are taking two inertial frames S and S dash. The motion of a particle in frame S can be described by its positional coordinates x, y and z. The positional coordinates x, y and z depend on time t. t is the time coordinate, x, y, z are the space coordinates. So, x, y, z and t are known as space time coordinates. In a similar manner, 
in frame s dash the same motion is described by the positional coordinates x dash which is a function of time t dash y dash which is also a function of time t dash z dash which is again a function of time t dash. We have already obtained special Lorentz transformation formula in module 1 of chapter 10. Now, the transformation formula are given by this. Here, x dash coordinate of frame s dash is connected with the corresponding coordinate x of frame s. V is the velocity with which frame s dash is moving with respect to fixed frame along the direction of common x axis. T is the time, c is the speed of light. Y dash is equal to y, z dash is equal to z. T dash is related with the corresponding time t in frame s. T dash is the time in frame s dash. Lorentz transformation formula give a transformation for time which is absent in Galilean transformation. This is the speciality of Lorentz transformation. Please note it. Velocity of the particle in S dash is u dash vector. If u dash suffix x, u dash suffix y, u dash suffix z are the components of velocity u dash vector along the x dash axis, y dash axis, z dash axis respectively, then we know that u dash suffix x is d d t dash operated on x dash. Similarly, u dash y is d d t dash operated on y dash, u dash z is given by d d t dash operated on z dash. Here, d d t dash is the ordinary derivative, t dash is the time in frame s dash, x dash, y dash, z dash are the coordinates in frame s dash. The corresponding velocity in frame s is given by u vector. If u suffix x, u suffix y, u suffix z are the components of u vector along x axis, y axis and z axis respectively, then u suffix x is d d t of x, u suffix y is d d t of y, u suffix z is d d t of z. d d t is the ordinary derivative. From Lorentz transformation formula, we have x dash equal to gamma into x minus v into t, where gamma is given by this one. t dash is equal to gamma into t minus v divided by c square into x. To define velocity, we need the space coordinate as well as time coordinates. Let us obtain the component of velocity in frame s dash along the x dash axis, which is u dash suffix x. u dash suffix x is equal to d d t dash of x dash. Let us calculate the differential d x dash. x dash is given here. So, dx dash is gamma into dx minus v into dt. We can write it here instead of dx dash. Let us calculate the differential dt dash. 
this can be obtained from here d t dash is given by gamma into d t minus v divided by c square into d x. Here we have written this result gamma here and gamma here cancels each other. So, we get this result. Please note that V is uniform, C is also uniform. So, this is again a constant. Dividing numerator and denominator by d t, we get this result. d d t of x is u sub x x, we have just substituted this one and get this result. In a similar fashion, we can get u dash suffix y, which is d d t dash operated on y dash. Let us calculate the differential d y dash. From the Lorentz transformation formula, we have y dash equal to y, which gives d y dash equal to d y. We have already obtained d t dash, here we have just written this result gamma is equal to 1 divided by square root of 1 minus v square divided by c square. If we divide numerator and denominator by d t, we get this result. d y d t is u suffix y. 1 divided by gamma is this expression d x d t is u suffix x. We have divided this expression by d t, so this becomes 1. Similarly, we can obtain the result which connects the velocity in frame s dash along the z dash axis with the velocity in frame s along the z axis in this manner. As usual, c is the speed of light. If v much much less than c, then what happened? Let us discuss about it. When v becomes much much less than c, then v by c obviously tends to 0. If we substitute v by c tends to 0 here, then we get u dash x is equal to u suffix x minus v, this becomes 0. So, the denominator becomes 1. Note it, u dash x is equal to u suffix x minus v. When v by c tends to 0, u dash suffix y becomes u suffix y, this becomes 1, this becomes 0, so the denominator also becomes 1, so this becomes u suffix y. Similarly, u dash z is equal to u suffix z when v becomes much much less than c. We have written this result here. Inverse velocity transformation formula can be obtained like this. To obtain the inverse velocity transformation formula, we have to replace the primed quantities by unprimed quantities and v by minus v. That is, if we replace the u x by u dash x, u y by u dash y, u z by u dash z and vice versa in the velocity transformation formula and also replacing v by minus v 
in that formula we can get this result. This is the inverse velocity transformation formula. If V becomes much much less than C, then what happens? Again V by C tends to 0 in such cases. So, putting V by C 0, we get u suffix f is equal to u dash suffix x plus V. Similarly, u suffix y is equal to u dash suffix y because V by C tends to 0, this gives 1 and this becomes also 1. In a similar fashion, we get u suffix z equal to u dash suffix z. This gives the addition law of velocities. Here, we have taken the sum of two velocities. Consider the case when in frame S dash, there are no velocity components along the y dash and z dash axis. Only the object moves along the common x dash axis. In that case, u dash suffix s is equal to u dash and u dash suffix y becomes 0. Similarly, u dash suffix z becomes 0. Then, relativistic law for addition of velocities is given by this one. u suffix x is equal to u dash plus v divided by 1 plus v divided by c square into u dash. We have just substituted u dash suffix x equal to u dash and substituting u dash y equal to 0, we get u y equal to 0 and in a similar fashion substituting u dash suffix z equal to 0, we get u suffix z equal to 0. So, one can conclude that if in frame s dash the object has no velocity along the y dash and z dash axis, then in frame s also the object has no velocity along the y and z dash axis. If u dash equal to c, c is the speed of light, then what happens? Let us test. Putting u dash equal to c here and in the denominator also, we get this quantity. This gives u x equal to c. So, one can conclude that this speed of light or velocity of light remains invariant in different inertial frames. We have already mentioned it, here we have verified the result. So far, we have considered the cases where the velocity is much, much less than the velocity of light or velocity is comparatively less than the speed of light and also consider the case when the velocity becomes equal to the speed of light. But we did not consider the case that the velocity of an object becomes greater than the speed of light. Why? If we consider that an object moves with a greater velocity compared to the velocity of light, then the Lorentz transformation formula, Lorentz Fitzgerald contraction and the time dilation will give imaginary result. So, one can remark that no system of inertia can exist for which V greater than C. In 1905, Einstein proposed some postulates. These postulates with their consequences 
develop the special theory of relativity. In view of this theory, we have obtained the Lorentz transformation formulae, which give the transformation of space and time. In respect of this special theory, we have to understand the matter, velocity and acceleration. In this module, we have already discussed the velocity in view of this special theory. Let us discuss the transformation of acceleration. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. We have already obtained the velocity transformation formula. So, let us take the differential of that. Taking differential, we get d u suffix x is equal to d u dash suffix x divided by 1 plus v divided by c square into u dash suffix x minus u dash suffix x plus v divided by 1 plus v divided by c square into u dash suffix x its whole square into v divided by c square into d u dash suffix x. Here, we used the rule of differentiation of numerator and denominator. In the first term, we have taken the differential of the numerator, taking the denominator fixed and in the second term, taking the numerator fixed, we have obtained the differential of denominator and get this result. Please note that V and C are uniform. In a similar fashion, taking the differential of the transformation formula for velocity in y and y dash direction, we get this result. Using the velocity transformation formula, connecting the velocity components along z and z dash axis, one can get this result taking the differential only. This gives the differential of numerator, the denominator remains unchanged and here the numerator remains unchanged, we have obtained the differential of denominator. Let u dash suffix x, u dash suffix y, u dash suffix z equal to 0. That is, this there are no components of velocity in frame s dash. In that case, d u suffix x becomes d u dash suffix x minus v square by c square into d u dash suffix x. This can be combined like this one. This gives gamma to the power minus 2 since gamma has the form like this. So, d u suffix x becomes gamma to the power minus 2 into d u dash suffix x. In a similar fashion, putting this result, we get d u suffix y equal to this one this gives gamma to the power minus 1. So, we get d u suffix y equal to gamma to the power minus 1 into d u dash suffix y. Similarly, we have this result. We have already obtained the differential d t, which is of the form this one, dividing this by d t dash we get this result. Here we have taken d t dash common and get this. This can be represented as u dash suffix x. Here we have assumed that u dash suffix x equal to 0. So, putting this we get d t equal to 
gamma into dt dash. The component of acceleration along x axis in frame S is given by d d t of u suffix x. If we substitute the result obtained for d u suffix x and d t, we get this result. This finally gives gamma to the power minus 3 f dash suffix x. f dash suffix x denotes the component of acceleration in frame s dash along the x dash axis. Similarly, f suffix y which is the component of acceleration along y direction in frame s is d d t of u suffix y. We have already obtained the expression for d u o suffix y which is this one and d t is this one. Substituting this and with some calculation we get this result f dash suffix y gives the acceleration component in frame s dash along y dash axis. Similarly, we get the relation between f suffix z and f dash suffix z. f suffix z is the component of acceleration in frame s along z axis, f dash suffix z is the component of acceleration along the z dash axis in frame s dash. If we denote the component of acceleration in x axis as f parallel and similarly component of acceleration in frame s dash along x dash axis as f parallel dash, then we get this result from this one. In a similar fashion, if we denote the perpendicular component of acceleration as f perpendicular, then we can combine these two results as this one. f perpendicular is equal to gamma to the power minus 2 into f perpendicular dash. Please note that these two results differ from one another. f parallel denotes the acceleration along the x axis, whereas f perpendicular denotes the acceleration component along either y or z axis. Let us discuss the linear momentum. In non-relativistic case, linear momentum of a particle of mass m moving with velocity v vector is given by mass into its velocity. If we denote the linear momentum as p vector, then we get p vector is equal to m into v vector. This is a vector quantity m is a scalar, so linear momentum is a vector quantity. In a relativistic case, linear momentum is given by p vector equal to m into gamma into v vector. Gamma has the expression like this. v is the velocity with which frame s dash is moving with respect to frame s s is a fixed frame, c is the speed of light. When v much much less than c, then v by c tends to 0. This is the non-relativistic case. In that case, this becomes 1, so gamma approaches to 1. Substituting gamma 1, we get p vector equal to m into v vector. This is the result we already obtained in non-relativistic case. So, we have p vector equal to m into v vector in non-relativistic mechanics. m into gamma is equal to m divided by square root of 1 minus v square by c square. Here, we have just substituted the value of gamma and obtained this. 
is the mass of the particle moving with velocity v vector in an inertial frame. We have already mentioned that a frame moving with uniform velocity with respect to a fixed frame is an inertial frame. Here S is a fixed frame, S dash is moving with respect to S with uniform velocity v vector, so S dash is an inertial frame. M is known as the rest mass of the particle in frame S dash. In 1905, Einstein developed the special theory of relativity. In view of special theory of relativity, we have obtained the Lorentz transformation formula, which give the transformation between the space and time of two inertial frames. Using these formulae, in this module, we have obtained the transformation for velocity and then taking the help of velocity transformation formulae, we have obtained the transformation relating the accelerations of two inertial frames. 